culture a very very important aspect of human life economy polity and all the other things of our life are expressed through culture today we will be discussing the cultural aspects in telangana movement the topic which we are going to discuss today is cultural renaissance in telangana movement what do you mean by renaissance renaissance means reinventing renaissance means what you call recreating the things in a very very new way in telugu we call it as punarujjivanam renaissance is a political word and cultural renaissance has played an important role in many movements all over the world whenever the whole society is into crisis whenever the society which is in crisis is fighting with itself fighting with the forces which are trying to stop the growth of the progress of the society then culture expresses itself in the form of literature in the form of art in the form of sculpture in the form of songs in the form of folk culture in the form of symbols they try to project the new consciousness they try to inject the consciousness into the society at times when the whole society is undergoing a serious change and there should be a fight not at revolution started not at the whole movement started then culture begins its work it makes the consciousness it creates the consciousness in the society and through consciousness you will raise to the occasion people will raise to the occasion because of the consciousness created by culture and thus culture has a very very important role to play in the movements you take any movement whether it is indian national movement whether it is a tribal movement where tribals uh, sung songs and sent messages sent new consciousness through their areas the same thing with our 1857 in 1857 when the movement was there when there was a fight against british the sanyasis or the peasantry or the leaders of these people of the 1857 movement were going on singing songs through songs they have propagated the message of 1857 throughout the length and breadth of the country come to any other movement in the latter phase we see culture playing an important role and who are the people who are creating culture culture creation is not a simple thing it is the people who are infusing new creativity into the society in the form of literature in the form of symbols in the form of art in the form of poetry songs music dance sculpture and all these things come under this one so what was happening in telangana during the last phase of the movement we can see there was a huge what you call uproar in terms of cultural forms we had hundreds and hundreds thousands of songs coming in the telangana movement compare with andhra pradesh when the people are asking for status quo that is samaykya andhra you don't have a single song of course you have a single song to be very very prompt and very clear samaykya andhra movement had only one song that is sung by gazal srinivas commission song enduku vidipovali manam enduku vidipovali why should we get separated this is what they are saying and he was saying that we are all brothers and all those things which is completely feudal or any sentimental notion but come to telangana movement you have hundreds and thousands of songs which are explaining what is the deprivation what is the alienation how telangana got deceived in the whole the period and what are the problems of telangana and how to raise the consciousness all these things came out in the form of songs new novels came write up scheme writer scheme and you are cultural forms in the form of folk form in the form of traditional folk forms everything is coming into four for example i tell you this is very 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 small form but if you see bonalu became a symbol of our culture this is a religious or a routine form which was there but it became a symbol of our telangana rejuvenation so like that we have to understand culture so culture plays a very very important role in the society by creating the consciousness and in the process we have created some symbols of telangana in the last phase of the movement some symbols came into four what were the symbols the basic thing is dakani tahzeeb what do you mean by tahzeeb 
it is the culture our culture telangana culture is known as dakkani tahzeeb we'll ex- we'll discuss about it then telangana talli another symbol botukamma bonalu alai balai and the farms and the books the poetry essays and novels created by literary personalities they inspired the society and new forms of culture came rewriting of history is form of culture rewriting of history is another important one because telangana history was completely discriminated so summing up all these things it becomes the cultural renaissance in telangana today in this topic we'll be dealing with the first four things like the how culture played an important role in creating the consciousness and the symbols of telangana then writers important writers who played an important role in creating the consciousness of telangana from the beginning not in the last phase we are talking from the beginning and next class we'll be talking about the efforts in the last phase in cultural forms and different new forms and different cultural forms or writings and many many forms created in this period plus rewriting of history we will be discussing in the next class so first let's talk about ganga jamuna tahzeeb that is our dakani tahzeeb what do you mean by ganga jamuna tahzeeb the compositeness hyderabad culture or telangana culture is not just a culture which evolved in just in one soil without interacting with other things hyderabad is cosmopolitan hyderabad is at a geographically very very important and it's a very strategic location so north meets south east meets west this is dakkan and dakkan as i said in other classes too telangana is the core of dakkan and hyderabad is the soul of telangana so if you understand telangana as the core of dakkan and hyderabad as the soul the culture of dakkan should represent should get reflected in hyderabad all the things whatever we call in our dakkani culture that is dakkani language urdu our urdu is different we are we call it as dakkani it is not just urdu like lucknow or any other place urdu our urdu is known as dakkani and the foods beverages like irani chai biryani kubani ka meetha jonna rote sarva pindi or many other things which we have specialities here in our telangana all these things are getting expressed in the last phase why we are talking about these things irani chai is a chai but it is expressed as our tea biryani if you take the symbol of biryani during that last phase of the meeting they were taking biryani was in the speeches of kcr to why he was talking about biryani telangana can prepare biryani well no other region can pre- prepare biryani well that's what he was saying why it's because the culture is expressed through food jonorote interesting thing i am starting this entire cultural renaissance with a small thing like jonorotelu jonorotelu or jowar ki roti that was the basic food telangana had and once the united andhra pradesh came rice growing and monoculture and come globalization aspect or liberation aspect you have completely monoculture cash crop systems and you lost jowar you lost jonnalu then what has happened you lost eating jonorotelu was considered as a raw thing or a uncivilized thing in the 1960 and movement in telangana the settlers were criticizing the people saying that you people are so uncivilized you don't know how to uh, eat rice and you eat jonorotelu this was the experience of those people and they were fighting now what has happened jonorotelu became a fashionable thing in present day society and it's not because of that because of many other reasons so our symbols were belittled and in the last phase you can see reinventing all the symbols like biryani is a popular one today and all these things are just natural things in hyderabad but all these things are getting popular and we are trying to say that our language is great our culture is great we are expressing it through the festivals food festivals during the last phase we had telangana samburalu in telangana samburalu all these things what i have talked were displayed and we are expressing that this is our culture see so we are reinventing it like that ganga jamuna tahzeeb is hyderabad so dakkani tahzeeb is hyderabad so we asserted ourselves in the last phase and some symbols now we are coming to the point of symbols telangana talli we had bharat mata first bharat mata even before bharat mata we had bangamata bangamata is 
Bengal. Bangamata first was the first mata to be created as a symbol of national consciousness of Bengal. From Bangamata there came Bharat Mata. Bharat Mata painting is the next phase. It's not the old one. Bharat Mata creation is after Bangamata. That is happening in the Indian freedoms movement. Then comes Andhra Mata. Who is Andhra Mata? Andhra Mata was designed on the lines of Bangamata or Bharata Mata by those who were trying to make assert that Andhra should be united into different region. In Madras province, this Andhra Mata concept came, Andhra Mata. And Andhra Mata was the rallying point for the Andhra Rashtra, Andhra Mata. But re really, what is happening? In 1956, once Telangana was merged with Andhra state, and everyone forgot Andhra Mata, no one was talking about Andhra Mata because now the meal is ready, now the state is ready, you can devour it. I am using devour means all the resources, employment opportunities and all these things. But when there was 1969 movement, in 1969 when Telangana was asserting that we are different, then suddenly they have brought the Andhra Mata back and the Andhra Mata took a shape of Telugu Talli now. Till then you don't have Telugu Talli, then comes Shankarambadi Sundaracharya song, Ma Telugu Talli ki Male Pudanda to create a consciousness saying that this is a fake consciousness, all, Telu, all Telugu are under Telugu Talli because Telangana people are trying or demanding a separate state. Now this Telugu Talli concept came in 1955, sorry 1975 to counter the Telangana consciousness. That is why you have to create a new symbol that is Telangana Talli. This happened in the last phase, creating a symbol for identity. So, B. S. Ramulu, now he is the chairman of BC Commission, Professor Gangadhar, Yekka Yadigir Rao, Yekka Yadigir Rao, a great sculptor who has created the Martyrs Memorial at Gun Park opposite to Assembly, 1969 Martyrs Memorial. Kapu Rajaya, a great painter from Siddhi Peta. Kapu Rajaya, then Lakshman Ele, who has created the state logo with this Charminar and uh, Kakatiya Thornam in it, that is state's logo. So all these people were sitting and uh, discussing along with KCR and uh, to create a new symbol of Telangana Talli. The first design was a simple village woman, but in the discussions, the opinion expressed is, once Telangana becomes a reality, she need not be like any poor woman. So let us enrich the whole, uh, what you call the total picture or figure with all the ornaments. So thus, Kohinoor and Jacob diamonds which are produced under Golconda, Kohinoor and Jacob diamonds are put in the crown of Telugu Telangana Thali. Then another that Jacob is put in the Vaddanam, you, that is the ornament around the waist, Vaddanam. And Dadwala or Pochampali looking like uh, saris, Telangana Thali wearing these saris. And the other things like Karim Nagar's filigree in Mattelu, that is the rings that, uh, what do you call, we have the foot rings for the married woman. Telangana Thali is wearing this silver filigree representing Karim Nagar silver filigree, those silver rings. So all these things representing Telangana and the main aspects that is corn is our staple food. Corn is symbolizing Dakkan's land and Dakkan crop and Batukamma, Batukamma is a cultural form of Telangana. So all these things put together, they have created a form known as Telangana Thali. Since then, Telangana Thali statues are being erected, are made and erected in different areas. B. Venkatramanachari was the sculptor who has sculpted with after all the deliberations and finally giving the shape of this one. You can see on the screen, the top one with specs is B. Venkatramanachari who is a sculptor. And Pasunuri Dayakar, who is the MP from Varangal now, was responsible for the mass production of the statues. He also student of his sculpture. So he produced en masse the Telangana Thali statues. Thus Telangana Thali became a popular symbol in Telangana movement. After this Telangana Thali's invention or creation of Telangana Thali form, all the meetings or these things, the TRS leaders, all those things, going to Telangana Thali statue and starting from there 
that has become the tradition. So, Telangana Thalli is coming at a juncture, at a time when Telugu Thalli was dominating the scenario and to separate the identities of Andhra and Telangana, Telangana Thalli gave. This is a symbolism. Telangana Thalli is not a reality, but symbolism. A woman with all richness, that is Telangana Thalli. Then comes Bhatukamma. Bhatukamma is typical to Telangana. Bhatukamma, in the name itself, it is a symbol of life. Bhatukamma. So, the identity of Telangana women, it is a cultural identity. Every village performed Bhatukamma during Dasara. And in the last phase of the movement, it became an important form to unify the people after 2008. Telangana Jagruti under Kavita, that is the MP from Nizamabad, she started Telangana Jagruti and Telangana Jagruti has popularized Bhatukamma as a form of struggle. Telangana in Telangana, in many other states, wherever Telanganaites are there, other countries too, Bhatukamma has become a popular identity for the people of Telangana and it is merged with the Telangana movement. And how it is merged, very interestingly, Bhatukamma should be performed and finally you will be putting all the flowers into the tank and Bhatukamma will be played in a, in a common place. Like for example, if you take that case of tank burn, if people or women are coming on Bhatka on tank burn and playing Bhatukamma on the day, what is wrong in that? But the government under United Andhra Pradesh stopped or did not allow the women to come on to tank burn and play Bhatukamma on the Jal Vihar side or that necklace road side. So, they have to go to court and get the permission to perform Bhatukamma or to play Bhatukamma near Tangman. So, what is happening? A simple form which is a traditional woman's form has become form of struggle that is Bhatukamma. Then comes Bonalu. Bonalu, another important what you call cultural symbol of Telangana. Started during Kutub Shahi period, Akkana Madana period. In Golconda Fort also you have Bonalu as an important function. In Ashada month, Telangana people celebrate Bonalu. Bonalu is a religious come medical festival because you see the elements in Bonalu, one is turmeric, the other is neem. Turmeric and neem along with the offerings symbolizes the hygiene. Ashada means rainy season, onset of rainy season. Neem and turmeric both are antiseptic, both kill fungus, both kill the bacteria. So, you are using these as a symbol along with religion and it has very interesting connotation in terms of religion and medicine too. So, Bonalu celebrating with huge what you call uh, what, uh, with a great spirit and merging things with Telangana movement. This has happened in the last phase. So, Golconda Lo Bonalu, Lal Darwaza Bonalu, Lashkar Bonalu, Lashkar Bonalu means Sikindrabad Bonalu. All these Bonalu has become part of the movement in the last phase. So, Telangana identity and Telangana demand merged with the cultural form of Bonalu, you can see in this period. Then comes, though it is just one day occasion and started by one person that is Dattatreya, Alai Balai. Alai Balai means actually in Dasra, we have this tradition. Means after giving jammy leaf to the other, you just hug each other and that is alai balai. That is the fraternity, that is the uh, unity between the people. So, that alai balai is a tradition of Telangana. And in the last 10 years or over a decade, it has become an important function during this period. Bandar Dattatreya was a person who has, who should be given credit for this form. And Telangana movement in the last phase, Alai Balai is also a place where people can come and Alai Balai is a program which is a rallying point in the Telangana movement. Like it is a cultural harmony, it is a symbol of cultural harmony and in Nizam college he has started once and later shifted to Tangman, Alai Balai is a form of Telangana which is a cultural thing. Why Alai Balai is, is becoming important, why Alai Balai is to be talked? Because under the United Andhra Pradesh government, when this state was United Andhra Pradesh, Telangana cultural forms were belittled. We were hesitant to perform it in open. We were hesitant because cultural forms are also the forms which create hegemony. 
Andhra cultural forms are many things were becoming popular. Bas basically, Andhra cultural forms are not being spread. Only one is spread, that is Andhra film. The films are the important instruments for suppression of all the cultural aspects. That is why Telugu film industry, which is under the domination of coastal Andhra capital, you can see all the symbols created by them are becoming popular and eating away all the local farms. And now, whether it is Alaibalai, Albonalu, or Batukamma, all these things are getting expressed in the last phase of the movement as a protest. Now, we are going to do all these things. That is what we did. That is why, though Alaibala is a small program, it is again becoming an important program. Bonalu, Batkama, the same thing. So, previously we were a little hesitant. We were also feeling shy because cultural dominance make you feel that our culture is not so superior. But Telangana has reasserted through all these cultural symbols in the last phase and these cultural aspects unified the people consciously that we are Telanganites. That is a simplest solution, simplest explanation for all these things, but that is the toughest explanation. So, cultural symbols make an impact on the society to understand how to proceed in the movement. First, unifying the people under the cultural unity, that is the important of these symbols. Then coming to the writers who inspired Telangana. What is writing basically? Literature is nothing but, literature is always the opposition. Literature is not the court poetry. Literature is not the status quo. Literature never speaks for status quo. Literature never says, yeah, whatever is good, all is well with the God. No, literature questions the authority. Literature questions the hegemony and that is the essence of literature. And in Telangana, literature has played a great role in all historical junctures or periods. For example, if you take the end, when the new millennium is coming, that is 1900 to 2000, you can see we had the library movement first. Library movement is part of your literary movement. Library is not just library, it is not just a house of books. Unless and until someone writes, how can you get it, the book into library? So, library movement and literary movement together mixed created consciousness in Telangana. The efforts of Communist Party, that is CPI or Andhra Mahasabha or some leaders who are out of Andhra Mahasabha like Suravaram Pratap Reddy, uh, sorry, those who are out of Communist Party, not Andhra Mahasabha, like Suravaram Pratap Reddy or Madapati Hanumantrao, all these people are Andhra Pratap Mahasabha leaders. These people were into Congress, but they were literary personalities too in those days. Many political leaders were literary personalities. So, in this process, what is happening? People who are creating literature are creating a new consciousness. They are taking up the periods, historical, uh, what you call uh, need, and you are creating the literature. That literature is taking a new thing. For example, you take, whenever we talk about the movements, generally we forget about the Dalit movement. You take the question of Dalit movement. Bhagyaradi Verma has created literature. He wrote dramas. He wrote three plays. Play P L Y plays. Why he is writing plays? To get the consciousness into the minds of the people. Through some message, he wanted to create that. Yes, Dalit emancipation can be done. He was bringing out magazines. Not only Bhagyaradi Verma, there are many stream, uh, shades of the society media that is print media or magazines or daily newspapers are coming up. Thus, the whole scenario is changed. This new literature, library movement has created a need for more and more good literature and you have more and more poets, writers, creators, essay writing, journalists and this is part of your writing. So, 1900s library movement and then literary movement. So, finally, you can see many writers inspired Telangana. Wherever there is a struggle, you can see the sharpness is expressed through writings. People will come out in protest because writing cannot be, any creativity cannot be a status quo. Remember this point. If you are creative, you should be questioning the authorities. You should be questioning the society's ruling class. So, that is what the literature did. Suravaram Pratapareddy, Dasharathi, Vatikotalwar Swami, 
and all these people were creating a new understanding through their writings. Surovaram Pratap Reddy is writing about the Andhra history and Dasrathi is writing against Nizam. Vatikota Alvar Swami, part and parcel of Telangana armed struggle, are got arrested and he is creating literature. So like that, many writers inspired before the state formation, before 1950s also and after 50s also. So I am not confining myself to the writers of last phase. Cultural Renaissance represents the entire change over a long period. So language and literature are also parts of, are uh, symbols of protest, are also instruments of protest. So language and literature has come. Now let's talk about the important writers or literary personalities who were inspiring Telangana in the entire period. We should start with Suravaram Pratap Reddy. Suravaram Pratap Reddy, whenever we talk about Suravaram Pratap Reddy, first we remember Golconda Patrika. Golconda Patrika is one magazine, one newspaper, which was clearly advocating the politics and policies and the wellness of Telangana, Suravaram Pratap Reddy. Suravaram Pratap Reddy, a journalist, a politician, a literary personality has created a multifaceted one, created many books like the first book, uh, the book he has written is Andhrula Sanghika Charitra. Andhrula Sanghika Charitra, first published in 1949. So, this book was the first Telugu book to get Sahitya Academy Award. So, Suroram Pratap Reddy is writing the history of Andhras at the same time creating literature. He was writing his articles are being published in Bharati magazines like Bharati. So, Suravaram Pratap Reddy should be talked as the one of the pioneers of literary movement in Telangana. He was the founder editor of Golconda Patrika. He was the first president of Nizam Rashtra Andhra Mahasabha at Andolu. Then Andolu or Jogi Peta. So, another important aspect at one point of time one poet one, one pandit, a scholar from Andhra has said, gave a statement that Nizam Rajyamuna Telugu Kavulu Pujyamu means there are no poets in Nizam state. Then as a result, as a reply, Suravaram Pratap Reddy has brought in a anthology, an anthology means poetry collection with the 350 poets. The poetry of these 350 plus poets were collected and put in the book known as Golconda Kaula Sanchika. Thus, Suravaram Pratap Reddy is expressing through his pen that Telangana has a rich, vibrant culture. So, 350 plus poets means it is not a small thing. Because one man said there is no poet in Telangana, then he is coming up with 350 plus poets. That is a contribution of Suravaram Pratap Reddy in the first phase of our creating consciousness. So, Suravaram Pratap Reddy should be categorized as a literary personality, thinker about Telangana politics plus a politician also. So, this is about Suravaram Pratap Reddy. Then comes Vatikota Alvar Swami. Vatikota Alvar Swami an illiterate or semi-literate getting educated through working in a, in a printing press and finally becoming the writer. He himself has become a writer. He wrote books. He was an activist. He, is a, he was a political activist. Where did he work? In which political party? He was working in CPI and he was a participant in Telangana armed struggle. And this man is again, Vatikota Alvar Swami, you can see, he is a political activist. He is a writer and then he was a publisher too. He has, he has started Deshaudharaka Grantamala and brought out at least 35 books and part of library movement. As an, a communist, he was ant, in the anti-Nizam struggle. He was jailed for his political beliefs, his activities and his books, Gangu, Prajalamanishi, Jailulopala, all these things represent Telangana society. Of course, Jailulopala is personal experiences in the jail, when he was inside the jail. But Gangu and Prajalamansh, these two books are representing Telangana history in a very beautiful manner. So, he was the symbol of protest during the last phase of movement. That is why when Vatikoda Alvar Swami's name comes, 
he is regarded as symbol of protest. In the latest movement, when we were trying to rename the institutions, the city central library of Ashoknagar, there was a demand to rename it as Vatikota Alvar Swami Library because of his connection with library movement and literary movement. So thus, we can see Vatikota Alvar Swami as one of the pioneer. So, we have discussed about the beginnings and the importance of the culture and discussed about a few one or two uh, writers of this period. And in the next segment, in the next class, we will be discussing about the writers in detail. Na Telangana Koti Ratanala Veena. This was a famous saying in the last phase of the movement. Whenever we were talking about the greatness of Telangana, we were taking the this, we were we were quoting this, and this quote is of Mahakavi, our own Dasharati Krishnamacharya. Na Telangana Koti Ratanala Veena was the what you call, you can say this is the mantra to say, uh, to uh, show the greatness of Telangana. Koti Ratanalu, thousands, di thousand diamonds. And his anti Nizam struggle is expressed through another quotation Nizam Razu Taratarala Bhuzu. So, Dasharathi, a writer of democratic aspirations, was there in the forefront in the anti Nizam struggle. Another important song which became so popular and especially Deshapa Srinivas or Koti or some of the singers, those who are popular in Telangana were singing that is Achalani Samudra Garbham Dachina Bada Bana Lavento. So, these are all the songs or the literary works our Dasharati has created. His works, famous works are Agnidhara, Rudraveena, Mahan Rodhyamamu. Galib Gitalu, Timiram to Samaram. Galib Gitalu, he is translating the poetry of Mirza Galib into Telugu. Thus, Dasharati has served the society through his literature. And very, very interestingly, he was the last Asthana Kavi of United Andhra Pradesh. There was a tradition of appointing Asthana Kavi in Andhra Pradesh. And Dasharati was appointed after Vishwanath Satyanarayana's demise. Then Dasharati was the Asthana Kavi and N.T. Ramarao came and abolished the post unceremoniously. And that was the last, he was, he was belittled by unceremoniously boosting from the post of Asthana Kavi. A Telangana poet who was in the forefront of Antinism struggle, he was jailed for it. He has created a consciousness for the democracy that is the Asharati. That, so that is why in the last phase of our movement we were frequently quoting Dasharati for his spirit of Telangana. Then after Dasharati we should talk about Kaloji. Dasharati, Kaloji and Sinare. These three people were giants in Telangana literature. That is why some of the critics of Telugu literature are the people who write about Telugu literature quoted that these three means Dasharati, Kaloji and Sinare were the Abhyudaya Kavitrayam from Telangana. Abhyudaya Kavitrayam from Telangana. So Kaloji Narayan Rao, the next poet. Kaloji, very very popular in the last phase of the movement. His poetry was quoted often. Purugu Vadu Daga Jeste Polimeradaka Tarudam. Manavade Daga Jeste Ikade Pati Pedatam, Patares Tamantad. So, that power of poetry Kaloji Narendra has brought in about the democratic aspirations of Telangana, we can see in his poetry. First, he was a Vishalandra supporter in the first phase in 1950s, he was a proponent of Vishalandra, but gradually he understood that Vishalandra or this United Andhra Pradesh is not going to help the people of Telangana. And they are killing the what you call culture of Telangana. Thus, he started propagating his the he is the center for the last phase, actually, if we have to say. Much, much before all the political struggles or organizations are formed, 
some intellectuals, some people who were carrying the legacy of 1969 were meeting in Khairatabad in one printing press and Kaloji was the symbol of their unity. Kaloji, Professor Jayashankar, Natyakala Prabhakar, Professor Harnath, all these people were meeting. So, we have to say Kaloji was the pioneer of 1969 movement in that sense. Kaloji was a symbol of 1969 movement's beginnings. So, this greatness of Kaloji we can see in terms of protest and democracy. He was a thorough democrat. He never allowed, dis, uh, he never allowed any authoritarian things to run over his head. So, he was for protest and democracy. His works like Nagodava, Telangana Ujjama Kavitalu, Jeevana Gatha. This Jeevana Gatha is the translation of the prophet of Khalil Gibran. Then Idi Nagodava, that is his autobiography. Bapu, 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 another poetry anthology. All these things are the contributions of Kaloji Narayan Rao. Kaloji Narayan Rao's work, all the works, all the poetry were brought in as Nagodava after in the last phase of the movement by Natikala Press people, Telangana Information Trust friends. So, Nagodava is Kaloji Narayan Rao's poetry. Poi chepina, poe phone chesina, talichina varini pilichoto korake. Like that, he wrote simple poetry. He is not using big, big words to bombard the things. He was using simplest words and giving the message for democracy, for Telangana. That is the greatness of Kaloji Narayan Rao. Then comes Professor Yashoda Reddy. Professor Yashoda Reddy, her stories in Telangana language became so popular. In 1952, she was the part of the Telangana Rachetal Sangha, which was started by Dashrati, Sinare, and all those people. So, Telangana Rachetal Sangha member, being a member of Telangana Rachetal Sangha, and by writing stories, and her stories came in the book form that is Yashoda Reddy Kathalu. In 1997, again in the last phase of the movement, she was part of the Telangana Sanskritika Vedika and thus she served the literature, literature, literature of Telangana. Her works include Yachamma Muchatlu, Mauru Kathalu, Bhavika, Ugadula Uyala, all these things are Professor Eshoda Reddy's works. Whenever literature is any person's, any literary personality is getting popularized, remember that literature should reflect the native soil. Unless and until the native soil is represented, the life of the native area is reflected, that literature cannot be popular. So, Yashoda Reddy's stories reflected the life of Telangana. Thus, Yashoda Reddy is part of the Telangana Renaissance movement in the last phase too. And comes next, we will be discussing about Samala Sadashiva, a great man, a scholar par excellence, a true representative of Telangana's composite culture. A person, a teacher, retired as headmaster from Adilabad, Samala Sadashiva studied in Marathi as he was in Adilabad. Marathi, Telugu, Hindi, all these things are interacting with his. And as a young boy, he was hearing the story of Komaram Bhim struggle. Inspired by Komaram Bhim struggle and all those things, Samala Sadashiva got shaped up ideologically. He was a scholar in Telugu, Marathi, Urdu, Farsi, English. And he was writing in all, all these languages. His Swaralayalu, the work of Swaralayalu was on Hindustani music. And he is writing a book on Hindustani music that is Swaralayalu. And on his autobiography Yadi was serialized in a daily newspaper. His works include Swaralayalu, Yadi, Malayamrutalu, then Sangeeta Shikharalu, Mirza Khalib. Whoever is learning Parsi or Urdu are definitely writing about Ghalib, remember, because Ghalib is such a fascinating poet for all those who know Urdu and Persian. So, Mirza Khalib. So, Samala Sadashiva, what is the context? He is a pundit, no doubt. He is a scholar, no doubt. But he is talking about the discrimination of Telangana. In one of the interviews, he is saying that in 1950s, when he was teaching in the classroom, the DEO, district education officer, who is from coastal Andhra, and came to the class, and he was talking to the headmaster, asking that, 
he is teaching telugu is he from our area our area means coastal andhra if he is not from coastal andhra how can he teach telugu uh, bring someone who is from our area and make the arrangements to teach telugu with uh, uh, under him so the discrimination you can see samala sadashiva was saying about this incident and saying that as i am from adilabad and this native telangana soil and they are belittling or they are trying to say that we don't know telugu but samala sadashiva has given fitting reply in many occasions in the all india radio also once he went again the same type of question you are a telangana it can you speak telugu as if telugu is the monopoly telugu is spoken only by andhras that is what the hegemonistic or the what do you call a proudish attitude of andhras about the language was and he said why this samala sadashiva in another interview says there is a wrong notion that in hyderabad state we were not learning telugu we were learning urdu also but we are learning telugu too so this character of samala sadashiva representing telangana in literature culture music and compositeness makes him one of the important personality of literary field in telangana then varavara rao all the people whom we are talking have different shades and varavara rao represents a revolutionary stream varavara rao started his career in poetry not as a teacher or a profession i am talking he started his poetry or his his entry into poetry or poetic world started at a very young age and finally in 1960s that is simmering 60s the entire society was into simmering mode there was so severe crisis and he has for, he was one of the person in a group which is known as tiragabadda kavulu tiragabadu kavulu sorry tiragabadu kavulu this tiragabadu kavulu is a group of poets who are questioning the society about the injustice prevalent in the society varavar rao a literary personality a revolutionary literary personality srujana a new monthly magazine has served the telugu literature i am saying telugu literature not just telangana literature to a larger extent brought under the banner of sahithi mitrulu who varavar rao was the center of this sahithi mitrulu srujana magazine has brought a great literary tradition literary heritage into our society srujana almost to 200 issues came out with beautiful literary works which are par excellence you can't compare with the other magazines then he is the founder member of virasam viplava rachaital sangam that is revolutionary writers association as a member of virasam as a member of the sahithi mitrulu or as the son of telangana he was in the forefront about demanding telangana or describing telangana in his works so in 2004 when the peace talks were held between the government and naxalites he was the mediator so you can see a writer who is talking about literature or some form of poetry is also an activist activist writer revolutionary varavar rao was for telangana too of course by birth he is a telanganite but not only birth what decides your quality that your involvement in the movement varangal declaration which is a famous declaration about telangana which was the meeting was held by all india people's resistance forum in that varangal declaration varavar rao was part of the whole meeting too his works include bijabhumi a book which is his poetry many works are their poetry works but we have to talk about varavar rao's contribution in terms of revolutionary movement with reference to telangana remember every stream of literature will impact the other two varavar rao period or varavar rao's impact on revolutionary literature on telangana is immense and thus you can see his contribution his work about the captive imagination that is his jail life was beautifully projected he was talking about the serious uh, in all his works you can see if it is about telangana you will see the indiscrimin the discrimination or injustice meted out to telangana from not just a geographical point of view from the ruling class point of view too geographical point of view means telangana is a 
state where you can fix a boundary but the democratic aspect of telangana is much more important where the classes which are being suppressed will have the power to say that democratic telangana aspect varavar rao ascribed to and varangal declaration he was part of the varangal declaration when gn sai baba the general secretary of aprf was organizing this meeting and varavar rao was part of it apart from varavar rao there are some poets like charaband raju whose poetry is touching the native soil a person from nalgonda district charaband raju another member of viplo raitha tulsangam died because of brain tumor and he was what do you call representing the telangana movement telangana society in a very beautiful manner because remember either varavar rao gaddar or charaband raju all these people were youngsters during the naxalbari movement inspired by naxalbari they are merging telangana struggle with the revolutionary struggle they are making a point that telangana struggle is part of the larger part of revolution that is the importance of varavar rao then comes allam rajayya you can't write an essay in telangana language but when you write novel in telangana telangana language standard language of telugu was not able to understand and accept it but allam rajayya has written in completely telangana language and his stories and novels represent the story of this telangana that is turbulent times of the society inside the society there are serious crises and there is struggle to all these things are reflected in alam rajayya's works and very important aspect about alam rajayya is till then there was no novel or a creative work on komuram bhim komuram bhim a tribal leader who fought against nizam in 1940s so komuram bhim novel co-authored by sahu sahu was also a revolutionary activist so sahu and alam rajayya wrote komuram bhim which is the best novel about komuram bhim even today so next professor birudraju ramaraju he was a researcher on folk culture till his last days he was thoroughly researching about the folk cultures of telangana and in 1960s he wrote a book that is a historical novel on raja sadashiva reddy who is part of the medak district landscape and he led a peasant revolt in medak in 17th century and he is writing a novel on sadashiva reddy raja sadashiva reddy thus bringing the pre 1857 rebellions into the fore he was a member of telangana rachaitala sangam and he participated actively in the last phase too whenever there was a meeting of culture or literature so thus professor biruduraj ramaraju has become synonymous with the folk culture in research mudiganti sujata reddy telangana sanskritika vedika was the form which came in which mudiganti sujata reddy was also active her stories were compiled into two volumes one is telangana toli taram kathalu second volume is telangana mali taram kathalu so toli taram and mali taram means earlier and later so these two works include her stories another important aspect about mudigondi sujatha reddy is she published vatikota alvar swami's jail jail book so vatikota alvar swami was in jail during anti british struggle anti nizam struggle so his experiences are written in jail sujatha reddy published it then comes nandini siddha reddy nageti chaalallo na telangana na telangana a famous song in the movement and which won nandi award in the last day last before year or 2011 nandi award goes to nandini siddha reddy for the song nageti chaalallo na telangana then he was a founder member of founder president of manjira rachaitala sangam nandini siddha reddy was a progressive he is a progressive democratic minded literary personality but when there was a severe repression on the 
poetry organizations to or writers organizations to severely under the chandrababu naidu period so they could not serve the purpose and they started some of the people like nandini siddharedi started a mag, uh, started a group that is manjira rachitala sangam which has created lot of which has brought out lot of literature which was completely ignored people or members of manjira rachitala sangam wrote beautiful poetry until the last phase of our telangana movement you can see nandini siddharedis and his colleague his, his comrades works are very important in telangana poetry he actively played he played an active role in the last phase of cultural movement even he led it so leading the movement actively is definitely important for any poet political activist all the poets are political activists there is no neutrality so nandini siddharedi was a poet political activist in the last phase of our telangana movement and his works include bhumi swapnam pranahita sambhashana sambhashana and last one ippati gali all these things are the works of nandini siddharedi presently is the chairman of telangana sahitya academy then comes dr c narayan reddy the first gnanpeet winner from telangana dasharathi has already say, said dasharathi college sinare constitute telangana abhyudaya kavitvar kavitrayam kavitray means three people these people are abhyudaya kavitrayam from telangana so he led the protest on tangment there was a serious what do you call attempt to appropriate all the grades into your area potana originally if you think potana is from which district that is varangal district and potana was taken by andras and they were claiming that potana is from rayalaseema potana is from orugallu orugallu means oka stone or one stone and there is vontimitta or such areas in rayalaseema and they are taking mere names and saying that potana is a poet from rayalaseema not from telangana trying to do it dr c narayan did along with many literary personalities went and protested on tangbund at potana statue when such attempts were made and last point about dr c narayan reddy he was the chairman of telangana sahitya parishad till his death telangana sahitya parishad previously you should excuse me this is not telangana sahitya parishad it is telangana saraswat parishad previously it was andhra saraswat parishad in bogulakunta that andhra saraswat parishad has become telangana saraswat parishad now so dr c narayan reddy was in forefront in changing the name of the telangana andhra sahitya parishad into telangana sahitya parishad and he led it actively he was inspiring the young generation and finally we say that dr c narayan reddy was a multifaceted personality with lot of creative understanding of poetry so dr c narayan reddy was popular in film songs also he was producing hundreds of he produced hundreds of film songs very interestingly though people are saying that andhra or toned up districts telugu is the proper telugu who were popular writers of this period dasharathi dr c narayan reddy were the people then comes gaddar gaddar a balladeer balladeer means who writes and sings performs a popular personality inspiring thousands and lakhs of people just with one song gaddar original name gummadi vithal rao from gajwel and this gaddar was inspired by naxalbari politics and he started jananatya mandali jananatya mandali today if we see what is the contribution of jananatya mandali or naxalbari to our cultural forms all the dhoom dham or telangana poet telangana performers wear this gongadi that blanket and the gochi gongadi that that cost that, that costume was designed by jananatya mandali to make the powerful statement that we are with the people and now you can see all the telangana troops perform with the same style of costumes gochi gongadi so this is a contribution of jananatya mandali of which gaddar was part and gaddar's songs in telangana on telangana 
latest ones two songs very popular songs one is amma telangana ma aakali kekala gana ma which became so popular in the 19 after 1998 which gives the statement that how telangana is getting in, uh, how telangana is a victim of injustice and the other one is the latest song that is podustunna poddu meeda podustunna poddu meeda song once it comes in jai bolu telangana film the entire audience will rise and sing along with gadar that's the power of the song in telangana movement and gadar fulfilled this with his revolutionary and telangana's fervor and he was part of the telangana movement too in 2010 october he was leading telangana praja front later he left so andeshri andeshri a person an illiterate but writing or creating a song which has been adopted as the state song jay jay he telangana janani jay ketanam song written by andeshri this has become the state song another song that is mayamai potunadamma manishana vaadu is song very touchy song which speaks of the what you call ethical what you call fall of the society post globalization how the people are getting so mechanized and they are losing they are they are getting disappeared the human is getting disappeared this is about society and andeshri's literary prowess is unparalleled and he was in all the all the movements all the phases all the meetings of telangana in the last phase and he is a symbol of the tradition of common people as creators of great literature he was honored by kakati university with honorary doctorate that is andeshri another balladeer we are talking about palle kanniru pedutundo a song which represent the tragic story of the artisan class in the village after the globalization or economic liberalization you see the traditional caste or traditional professions are getting completely rawdil they are completely pushed into poverty because of this globalization so that song a great song on telangana culture and telangana society palle kaniru pedutundo kanipinchani kutrala a song which was uh, pictureized in kubusam film and his songs his poetry is nothing but the flavor of the soil and original to the core that is goreti venkanna he has also participated in all the meetings of telangana movement in the last phase thus we are all we all these uh, poet uh, poets are performers are balladeers writers they have created a consciousness to push the society further and fight for telangana in the next class we'll be talking about the efforts of different people who carried forward the spirit of all the poets or literary personalities who were giving this consciousness 